The wolf eel is not a wolf or an eel, in case you were wondering. Hi, what's going on everybody? My name is Brandon. I'm a marine biologist and an artist, and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them through science, stories, and art. If you're new to this community, welcome. Stick around to the very end to learn more about my monthly charities. Today we're going to be discovering the wolf eel. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Anorichthys oscillatus are most commonly known as wolf eels. Interesting thing that they are not actually wolves, and they're not actually eels. So what is it with all these animals that aren't the things that they're named after? I have featured many animals that are not the things that they're named for, and it's just kind of weird. Wolf eels are wolf fish. Unlike true eels, the wolf eel has pectoral fins with two gill slits. True eels don't have gill slits, they have gill holes and don't have pectoral fins. So, where do these fish live? Wolf eels can be found in North Pacific Ocean Ring from Japan around to Alaska and down to Baja, California. They have different depth ranges depending on their life stage. They can be found from shallow water to 225 meters deep. Juveniles are small and drift with the currents. As they grow, they have a pelagic phase where they swim in the mid-water. Once they reach adulthood, they settle to the benthic and interact with the substrate. Wolf eels love wrapping their long bodies in caves, crevices, holes, and rocks. Once they settle, they don't move too far from their hidey hole unless they are kicked out by a larger wolf eel or a giant Pacific octopus. Now that we know where to look, let's discover what we are looking for. Wolf eels are easy to identify. They don't differ in appearance very much. They have a large head with a big mouth, little eyes, pectoral fins, and a long snake-like body. On average, wolf eels grow to eight feet long. They have soft fins that run the dorsal and ventral surface. They use this body shape to slither through the water. That is why it's called a serpentine or eel-like body shape. Adults are dark slate gray and juveniles are bright orange. Surprising. Wolf eels have dark spotted patterns along the entire body. Although wolf eels are fish, they don't have scales like a typical fish that you imagine. Their scales don't cover their whole body. Instead, these fish are more covered in a thick leathery skin than scales. This skin is also covered in a slime coat. It keeps the animal healthy and safe in the rocks. Sometimes rocks are sharp. Another interesting fact about wolf eels is that they display paired mating for life. Once a male finds a female he likes, he quickly mates with her and they move into a new hole together. The male will squeeze the female's abdomen, telling her that he is ready to mate, and then she will lay her eggs. She will lay roughly 10,000 eggs each year. They both take care of the eggs, and in three to four months, new wolf eels emerge from the den. Wolf eels live on average for 25 years in the wild. Let's move on to our next segment of the adventure. What do wolf eels eat, and how are they doing? Wolf eels eat hard-shelled animals like crabs, urchins, sand dollars, snails, abalone, clams, mussels, and fish. Wolf eels are not fast, but they can lunge from their hole and grab prey as it moves past its den. The wolf eel curls itself into an S shape and will lunge forward. Juveniles don't have the strength to crush all of the food that an adult can eat. They, perf they prefer to grab food with their front teeth and tear it apart. Adults eat crunchy food to keep their molars healthy. Yes, I said molars. Adult wolf eels use their flat molars to crush the shell of their prey. In captivity, these fish need to eat crunchy food to stay healthy. If they eat soft body fish and squid all of the time, their molars will deteriorate. 
So, what eats the wolf fish? It is interesting to think of something that would eat an eight foot long fish for a meal. It turns out the harbor seals will eat wolf eels as snacks. How are wolf eels doing in the wild? The IUCN Red List has them listed as not evaluated. It is difficult to determine how these fish are doing. There needs to be more studies conducted in order to create a report. This seems like a common thing with the fish that we are discovering. I use the IUCN Red List because it is the most reliable source of data for population health. Everything is done the same way, and I know that the data is consistent. If you want to see a wolf eel, what do you need to know about its behavior? Is this fish dangerous to your health? No. They are only territorial when other wolf fish try to steal their den. Unlike a mora eel, feel free to get relatively close for that photo opportunity. Just be mindful that they are wild animals. If they do decide to bite or attack, uh, remember that their jaws are strong enough to crush a crab shell. It is the time during our adventure where we get to hear about my personal encounter with this animal. I have seen wolf eels in the wild and in captivity. These two were photographed at the Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium. One was right side up and the other was upside down. I thought this was funny. I had never seen a wolf eel wiggling upside down before, so naturally I had to do some digging. Why was this fish upside down? Was it sick and dying? Was it the class clown seeking attention from the onlookers? It turns out wolf eels get itchy. If they have a scratch or something irritating their skin, they will roll over and scratch it. Sometimes things get stuck or rub the slime coat in the wrong way. It is their way of dealing with the problem. When I found this out, I was amused. I had never thought of a fish getting itchy or scratching itself before. I was lucky to see it and capture it for you. I love capturing neat behavior that might be missed. It means that I can share with you and have a fun bit of trivia floating around. As the details come into focus on this painting, the last grains of sand are left in our timer. I will call this adventure finished. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, click subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified when I post new content. I do my best to post new content every single weekend, but sometimes life gets in the way or a painting is too detailed to finish in a week. Alright, so since it's the end of April, we're still doing our charity for MS. Links are down in the description. If you don't know, MS is a disease that affects the nerves and the nervous system and how they connect and communicate with the body. I was lucky enough to be a part of a MS walk this during the beginning of this month. Um, the page that you're going to be donating to is to help one of my swim teammates. Her name is Shauna. Is going to go help her page for MS donations. Thank you so much for participating. I look forward to May. I want this to be a friendly community where people come together and we can help the general public or the greater world in even a small way. And I thank you so much for your generosity. If you would like to help this community, you can do so by purchasing the art that you see in, this, in these videos. I sell my art in the forms of originals as well as museum quality prints. Now my originals run $12 a linear inch and my Prints run six and three dollars a linear inch, depending if you get a limited edition or an unlimited edition print. May 5th, I'm gonna be at a show in Redmond. Please stop by, say hi, buy some art if you would like. Um, I'm gonna be there from 11 till seven, I believe. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Come, stop by, say hi. Also right now, my Easter egg is still on display. Um, until May 5th and then it's gonna move to the Linwood Convention Center and in June I'm gonna be at an artist reception if you would like to come by say hi um, come look at all the art and come support me that would be awesome 
I also sell apparel. So I've been, I've started creating apparel on Teespring. It's really fun. I like designing things. I like creating things. And I just want to create stuff that you want to wear or that you want to support this channel with. Well, I've taken enough of your time. I've been Brandon, and I'll see you in our next adventure.